Jennifer, T.Y. 전태양, m a m 최지성, 아르마니, 박진영, d i 백동주. 아프리카 TV, Break Up Studio Live. 2020 GSL Season c o d e s Showdown. Welcome back, everyone. It's time to eliminate one of the four players from Group E. This is Armani versus Bomber. Um, you know, Bomber, if you followed the early few years of StarCraft II, as the game was developing and the uh, expansions were continuing to come out, Bomber was one of the most dominant players, particularly in global tournaments, uh, marathon tournaments, down. which are held all over the world, Asia, Europe, North America. Um, but he has been gone for some time now, fulfilling his military service, which is required of all young, able-bodied men in South Korea. Um, Armani is the rookie of GSL, and it's a little bit weird to say because he's been in five GSLs already. Or I guess yeah. I should say four already. This is his fifth. But I really don't know where this goes or how this is going to look. I mean, Bomber has so much experience, but is really from a different era. Yeah. Ar Armani looked good, but not uh, clean enough, not strong enough, not reactive enough to take on Deer. But Bomber's a different opponent. I think this could go either way, but I'm banking on Bomber. Oh, I'm taking Armani with this. I'm going one. with the fan favorite here. I'm throwing him some red meat. I'm like, guys, remember when Bomber was so good? Well, he oh, can be good again, Tasos. I believe. Bomber. I want it. Sign my mouse pad. Turn to Jumbi. Why do you want it? It's like our production got invaded. Performance drop, sir. Nesty's face comes on screen. Oh my god. Did you forget to buy taste doses? Never. Nesty, your English is amazing now. Africa Press. Armani. Nesty does not speak English. He just speaks into your mind directly. That's right. So, of course, you understand. You hear it as English because you're simple. That's right. It's like that movie Contact. Game <laughs> GP. That's um, old now. Or the, the aliens are her parents. She's like, they're like, we thought this would be the easiest way to talk to you. Remember that? Oh, you're talking about the Jodie Foster movie? Yeah, yeah. What did you think? Was there another contact? Uh, no, I was just, I was thinking of the more recent, um, I can't even remember what the name of it was. But, uh, yeah, they've got a nice record, too. Uh, oh, God, what was... Is the name of that? Is this is a movie, or a yeah, a movie that came out more recently. Arrival. It, arrival. Arrival. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought about. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But they they took the form of her parents to talk to her. Arrival's about. great too. That has one of the greatest quotes of all time, though. The uh, Contact movie, where like the first one blows up, right? And they're like, this is America. Why build one when you can build two for twice the price? <laughs> it's like, damn, that's sick. <laughs> But, uh, well, that was an all right movie. Contact was okay until they actually got to meet the aliens. Then I'm like, oh. It was silly the way that, yeah, that, that's how It was I better want. when there was just like that that beeping sound, like, brr, yeah. brr. I want this to be an elaborate, like, scheme that they eat her or something. <laughs> you know? I think it would have been better if at the end of Contact they discovered it was actually just a giant alien that had left its iPhone alarm on for eternity and it's just <laughs> beeping like that. There's no major communication that's trying to be made. Mm -hmm go back and check that one out. I mean, that's it. Sometimes these things, you go back and watch them, and they did not age very well. Yeah. I feel like that one would be all right, though. It was yeah. kind of, yeah. I've been going through the old uh, Alien trilogy. Yeah. Alien 1, I finished Alien 2. I'm on Alien 3 now. Alien 3 was actually better than I remembered it, now that I'm was older it? and watching it. I'm like, oh, this is a pretty cool... I can't cool... even remember what happened in it, to be honest. It's been so long. It's Yeah, well, I remember as a kid, I think I was mostly focused on, like, is there enough action? Yeah, number one is the only one that I really ever rewatch. Yeah, well, that's the best one by yeah. far. That's by far the best one. Yeah. Except for Prometheus. That one's like, that's mm. by far the best ah. one. The part where the... Oh, wait, Alien okay. 4 or whatever? No, no, yeah, no. Alien Resurrection is actually the, the true canon. <laughs> Remember when the... the, 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 the that's the one with the really weird-looking alien, and then, like, she has the robot suit, and they fight, and it gets sucked out through the window, right? Yeah, through the back of its head. It's like the back of its head gets stuck in the <laughs> hole, and it sucks out its insides. Like, <laughs> its oatmeal, oatmeal brain gets pulled out through the back. Now, to be fair, 
Yeah, out of everything that happens in all the alien movies, that moment is the thing that I think about the most. Yeah. Getting that's... sucked out through the window, through the little hole. Well, the funny thing is... I still think about that regularly. Well, what's funny is that it shows that there's a better understanding of, of, of actual space, which is a problem in science fiction. If you look at the old alien, they actually open up the, alien, the, the, the spaceship door for a little bit, you know. They're kind of hanging on almost like it's uh, the edge of an airplane, although yeah. that's not how it's supposed to work at all. It's a little bit distracting. They even did that in one of those Star Wars movies recently where Princess Leia's like just in space. Oh, the space witch? Yeah, space she witch. She just one. flies suddenly because yeah. she has magic powers. Yeah, and yeah, her yeah, eyeballs was... don't explode because she's in outer space. Uh, no, Disney's doing a great job with that. Yeah, series. no, no the, the Star Wars is definitely in good hands. Yeah. Do you realize how bad Star Wars is actually going to be if this continues to just be made by Disney? That would be like... People in 100 years from now are going to talk about how people once thought Star Wars was good and they're not going to understand yeah. where it all started. Yeah. They're only going to find VHS copies of uh, the original prequels from Jar Jar Banks. They're like, That's what? right. <laughs> like, yeah, they'll be like, well, wasn't the first one with Jar Jar? I'm like, no, 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 no. They made the fourth one first. They're like, mm, <laughs> doesn't doesn't sound right to me. All right, so we actually have a very cool build coming out of Bomber right here. He's getting quick concussive. He's got a landed Viking there as well as two Marauders. So this is going to help his Hellions to actually do a hell of a lot of damage because he can slow the Queens down. Yeah, this is very cool. Uh, pushing forward now. Looks like he's going to target this one Queen kind of in the middle. The Queen getting low. No transfusions able, available, so it does go down. Bailings are being made. There's 10. But actually, this is pretty far off. Yeah, he is doing a great job Although, with this right now. I'm kind of surprised he didn't attack into that. I guess he doesn't know where those Banes are at, but he could have actually forced a cancel on all of them. I would have loved him. Yeah, look, he split two of them off, so that's brilliant. Oh, beautiful. Oh, the attack move really not paying off right there. Armani in hot water, but it looks like this attack might be fizzling out as Bomber backs off. Yeah, he actually ended up losing that medevac. We didn't get to see it on screen, but uh, JYP shows us there. Uh, that was cool, though. I like that. I like little teched out. It's like this is almost a push that you know. Yeah, like, concussive shells and a landed Viking. Ha yeah. <laughs> ha! I got you. But this is what makes Bomber so good. I mean, he's really bringing his own style into it. Very cool. Mm. I like it. All right, 1-1 one, one on the way right now for Armani. Bomber as well. Pretty well lined up on those. Layer just now starting. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like this is going to just get into a macro game. It doesn't seem like anyone has potential to kill each other at all. No, I think you're right about that. But, again, one of the things I wanted to see is a couple games of Bomber in a macro game pushing, moving around, because he was so strong in the early StarCraft days, just really able to, to seize the game by the throat and tell it what's up. Um, so strong with pushing and attacking and dropping. Now, Armani, on the other hand, so far today, he seemed like he has a lot of good ideas, but not great execution. Yeah, yeah. It, well, Armani just is, like, kind of a more modern player than Bomber, so I felt like he should do better. Uh, I've, Thing liked, is, though, I've liked his progression over the last couple of years. Like, he has been getting better. It's been a little bit up and down. But, you know, but also, he lives with Special, and that makes me think, like, Special is... I mean, you have to call him, like, a top six Terran in the world, I would say. Absolutely. Uh, and, I mean, that's that that should help his CBT, right? Like, that I would should help so, his understanding yeah. quite a bit. Now, uh, one thing I want to just clarify here, because I think we're talking about Bomber in a certain way. It's not like this guy was frozen, and then we just thawed him out and brought him back, and he's in a different time period, and he's you know he's not like a caveman. That's what it feels like, actually. Yeah, but but the truth is, he's probably talked to all the other pros. He's probably been totally updated on exactly what he needs yeah, to do to play. So, you know, I think he still is going to have a more modernized approach. I mean, he's not like uh, he hasn't been what Han Soloed in uh what is what was he? Carbonite? Yeah. <laughs> He hasn't been carbonated. No, he hasn't been carbonated. You're Although I will right. tell you guys, I do secretly have a fantasy of just, you know, someone I don't like just freezing in carbonite, putting them on my wall. That would be pretty epic. I have a fantasy of uh, freezing my whole family in carbonite and then taking a long nap and then I'm losing <laughs> Yeah, it's my fantasy taste. I can imagine that. Now, I, I have a fantasy actually of putting you in carbonite for like two years and then bringing you out without telling you and having you cast a TDZ and making you do the Reaper part. And then you're just going to be like, yeah, no, everything's fine. I'm like, tasteless. You're 38. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Artosis. Depending on how the game is patched, I will always for all time be able to do the Reaper part of the game <laughs> against Zerg where they run around and kill maybe one Link. Who killed a Link? 
Uh, Maru did. Whoa, that's why Whoa, he's the best. Yeah, Maru is going to land. That's so sick. All right, clearing some creep right now. Bomber uh, could get surrounded here. It's definitely a position where Zerk can hit from a lot of angles. He's going to back <laughs> off. Infestation pit <laughs> over here. What's so funny? Well, you said he could get surrounded here, and there's, like, Hellbats there. And so I was thinking that dumb quote, like, you're not, uh, I'm not trapped in here. <laughs> you're the, trapped the, in the here. The Watchman quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah where it's like, you're not surrounding me. I'm surrounding you. But it's, it's like, like, no, no, no. It's like He's actually, surrounding you. I'm like, this is not a matter of perspective. Like, one <laughs> is over the other. Yeah. I like that, though. Uh, the push comes out now. Thanks, Jesus. <laughs> uh, this is not enough blings to do anything, I think, in substance. Oh, ooh, Bomber looking good so far in this push. He's on a lot of Zerk creep, though, but it's a pretty narrow, not a huge valley, but a pretty narrow uh, area for the Banelings to try to go through without eating so much splash. Oh, my God, but with uh, tanks oh, on stage, splash is unavailable. Yeah. Maybe a questionable decision as far as multitasking goes here, and now Armani obliterates. Obliterates that army. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, no. It's worse. Speed bailings everywhere right now. You know, so many workers go down as well. I think I think we're kind of catching what you were pointing out earlier, Artos, is that you know as good as Bomber is, Armani is a more modern player. But hold on. The push comes further forward. Yeah, he doesn't have that many SCVs, but his army is looking pretty strong. He does have two two upgrades, getting in range of this hatchery now. He is still on creep though. That is a big deal, especially for when these bailings finish. Oh my gosh, the hatchery is getting so low. I think Bomber might be able to take it again. Uh, units parading through here. But at the last second, beautiful control. Banelings continuing to push this back. Yeah, a lot of links coming out right now. I think he is going to be able to push this back. I swear off of that hatchery well. is at like 5% health or something. It's probably pretty low. It's so low. And now the push is all the way off the creep. Uh, you can see Bomber frantically trying to push forward. This may lead to an overextension, though. Oh my gosh, Manly's finishing just in the nick of time. And now Medivacs have to pick up and boost away. And the push will be reset now back all the way onto the Terran side of the map. Again, three base and uh, a becoming five base Zerg. Dude, he's on 77 drones. And look at the creep spread. It's good enough that I feel like that was Bomber's really big chance. Yeah. Because we're on Hive Tech right now. Me and Armani. You and Bomber, what are you even doing? You making one siege tank at a time? Me and Bomber What's that are do? pushing on creep and picking yeah. up and running away, man. You got three tanks or something? Yeah, look at that. Three tanks. Cool, guys. Uh-oh. Oh! Good pull away by Bomber. It looks like he might barely... Okay, I was going to say, barely save those, but unfortunately, seven go down at the last second as Bomber is getting really pushed to the limit here as far as his multitasking can go. Okay, he's setting up once again trying to find a way in. But the amount of Ling Bane that's being created right now is truly enormous. I can't imagine him not breaking this. Like, he has yeah. to bring a group well, around from the other side. Well, maybe if he goes all in from one side of it, but oh my god, those blinding clouds really do support as well. Yeah, there might just be too much. I think Bomber's splitting's good, but the macro... I'm actually surprised. I thought he was going to keep attacking there. You know, I think well, if, if he had found a way to get a group around the other side of that, he could have cleared this entire Terran army. Oh God, those Banely connections! This is the, one of the first oh. times. One of the first times that the screen can almost not quite zoom out enough to catch everything. Yeah. Oh my oh, God. Oh, and yeah, we missed a big attack over there with the Banelings detonating. Looks like 15 SCVs. I mean. I think the counterattack here will force, yep, that's it. I was going to say the counterattack here will force the third CC to lift off, and then Bomber will be out of gas. Metaphorically, he'll just be out of juice that game. There's nothing else he could do. Yeah, Terrence generally don't run out of gas, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. You don't have Archons. They don't have Investors. Uh, but yeah, they, I mean, it, Bomber, Bomber had like a cool opener. It was kind of creative and neat. It, it, we've seen things come somewhat similar to that before, but I thought he executed it pretty well overall, got a bit of damage done. But as the game progressed, Armani just kind of showing the way that that you can play this matchup, where you're just making so many links and banes that you know you can just kill army after army. So now we go into game two on Nightshade. Armani's showing that uh, his strength only grows as the timer goes on. Bomber looking the strongest in the early game. Um, but when it comes to late game TVZ, it's like he just doesn't quite have it. 
Uh, his splitting's good, his pushing's good, but you can see it seems like Bomber's stats are higher in every category, so to speak. Um, but you know, Bomber doesn't have to play a standard game. He's free to do whatever he thinks will yeah. win. Maybe we'll have some kind of crazy cheese. I don't know. You know what? Why not mix in a double proxy racks? Like, yeah. go for the win. Well, that's what all the Terrans that win do anyways, at I least know. in one of the games. So Just it's like, like them. Yeah. Just play like Just Mark. play like TY. Yeah. Um, our countdown has now started up. Again, the loser of this series is out of the GSL code as the winner goes on to fight against Deer, who is waiting to play in the fifth best of three, the final match, and decide who will then move on into the round of 16. Armani and Bob are both the low tier players, at least in this season. One's gonna move on. Let's see uh, who gets closer to that, or actually does it. Turn to Jumbi, why you? Africa Press, Armani, Park Jin Hyung. Team GP, Bamo, Che Ji Sung. Yeah. Peeking out. He actually thinks that Bomber's going to do what we suggested. So he agrees right. that this is what Bomber He's should be doing. He's a fan of our casting. That's all we can say. Mm. No wonder he's losing. Now where would Taste Osis hide their barracks if they were Bomber? <laughs> uh, Bomber's so, staying at home, though. Well, lucky for him, he chose not to proxy some barracks because this definitely would have been scouted. Mm -hmm. Uh, the fact that Armani is drone scouted for them, I, I really like that. I think that's a smart I think it's here. I think it's generally speaking a good read on what a best of three would look like. Yeah, and maybe and just the, preempting it. This would be what he would be scared of, right? This is probably the, the one thing that really could kill him. Well, I don't think Armani is afraid of Bomber in a long game. Yeah, I don't think I so. I think that at this point in time, especially just the feel of that last game, I think if whenever you have games like that, you go, oh, okay, yeah, I actually am better. I just need to make sure I don't Which I is cross kinda, my T's and dot my I's. Kind of funny when you think about what Bomber was known for. He was well, like the best Paraday pusher in the whole world. Paraday? Parade, mm -hmm. but like fancy. I know. <laughs> but French. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the French word yeah. for parade. <laughs> <laughs> Paraday. Um, you know, it is kind of crazy how much players improve over eras you know we've had players but wait a second the players back then were better i am a guy who posts on forms do you see what i see <laughs> uh yeah i know there's always people that like talking about rts games more than understanding them who will say that actually the, oh my god that was a good ball that was a good see good he is ball. better he yeah. is but there he is bomber just keep if i cheer for you hard enough you'll win uh, no but like it's insane how like Someone who was dominant, let's say like three or four years ago, yeah, comes up again, it's and they have so to play. Hard it's to like, back. wow, you are not up to par. Yeah, this game moves on and, and continues to people advance at it and understand it better, with or without you. Yeah, um, it seems like those old pros they come back and they get to a certain level that's really impressive, like they're really good, but that extra oomph to get over the hump is so difficult. Can I point out something as well I find funny about this? Since, since we're talking about one of these weird things that does happen in the StarCraft scene where, and again, it's always people on forums, faceless people on forums that say that the games are better at this time and now people are not as good. Yeah. You know who's never said that? The pro former gamers. pro gamers of the time that are oh, being yeah. stated as better. That's true. Literally yeah. never. Literally never. There's never ever a player who's like really good six years ago who's saying, oh yeah, no, we were better back then. They're literally, because they know, because when they get online and play, they get smashed. Yeah. And it's Yet, not just because they're out of practice. They, yes. Everyone just gets so much better. Anyone who plays This is happening this. on Team Liquid and StarCraft 1. It's happened like five separate times and they are like, dude, the I remember that are article than... a few years ago on StarCraft 2. It's like the players are just worse now. They're just worse now. Oh, really? I'm like, really? <laughs> Guy who just, yeah. Is that right? Is there a single pro gamer you can ask that will agree with that from, from now or then? Yeah. <laughs> Anytime, Anytime period. Anytime period. Like, yeah, 
it's uh, it's pretty wild. But you see that, and you know, as far as players that have come back from the military, right? Sure. We talked about this in Dreams Group. Dream is basically the best anyone's gotten after the military so far. Harding had a pretty long break and has come back, uh, even though it wasn't military service. Uh, but you see him kind of reaching similar levels. He's not quite to where he used to be because yeah, he was—he was, still he was the up. best in the world at one point. Yeah. You know, yeah. And he's not there, but like he's actually competitive with everyone, which is like, wow, we finally have someone able to do this. Well, this took a while. You know, we, we have it with StarCraft uh, One as well, where you know it, some players still haven't done their military service, others are just now finishing it up. But you see yeah. them coming back, and yeah, it's hard, man. I mean, after you did your two years of military service. Um, yeah. You know, to come back and try to be able to compete, it's hard, but it's not like some. It's not like taking a, a certain period of time off means you can never be as good as you were before. That's just that literally just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's something that is so physical that like, yeah, sure, I guess you know, 50 year old NFL player with the knees and the, the damage to the body, yeah, you can't just come back. Yeah. It, as long as your wrists and hands are going to be okay, you can play as fast, and it's not like intellectually you become more deficient. Well, even with that, as understanding in every everything grows uh we're seeing older and older athletes do better a lot of the time as well like look at roger federer right yeah he's going to be turning 40 he's still the best in the world yeah right that's true maybe he's not right number one right at this exact thing but he's still winning majors it's like yeah this is crazy yeah. it's you know once upon a time it was like you hit 30 and that was the wall yeah <laughs> and no kidding yeah yeah but it's uh it's exciting to see that happen within starcraft as well i was always wondering if this would ever occur but well, if you remember, there was a whole period of time where um, older players are making this bizarre excuse. This was unique to Korea, but people just eat it up or ate it up at the time. It was like, yeah, when you get older, they would say your hands don't move as fast, which is like literally that doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. It's not like an 18-year-old has faster hands than a 25-year-old. Yeah. You know, that, 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 but, but, but people would say this, that you'd see it parroted on form. Someone's going to tweet at you this one study that was posted on ESPN about like reaction speeds or something that was just. What actually happens is people get older and change their values. Yeah, and they stop practicing as much in some cases. Yeah. But this is also, you know, a fat, just the subject itself is also an interesting talk. Is he going to lose that? No. No. Tomato banshee and pumpkin banshee. Um, <laughs> so. No, but this is an interesting thing, is, and this is actually a problem with the internet now, especially with Reddit in general, but just people say, one person says something that's not true or not accurate or not really sensible, and it just gets parroted for eternity. That's true. And it, people just keep repeating it. And I, I see this, I've seen this throughout my just career, even before I was commenting as a player, as you know, someone who was passionate about the game. Good save by Bomber. You know, this um, is just one. You just see people just kind of just say stuff over and over and over again, and there's no evidence for it, or there's no, you know, yeah. And they and then that just becomes the norm. And then eventually, I meet a major tournament organizer or a person at Blizzard who's then repeated that, and I'm like, all right, well here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the disease has finally become it reached its final form, yeah. and everybody's just saying it to each other, and nobody's thinking critically about it, and then you know, yeah. It's it's good to think more critically, but yeah, the thing is, this is a message of hope that Tasis is saying. Yes. This where is. someone like Bomber, actually, he could get back to his old self, where he's yeah. uh, one of the best three, four Terrans in the world. That could occur if he wants to put in the time, if he wants to put in the effort, you know? Yeah. There's uh, no reason he can't. There's yeah. not. There's really old and yeah, no he, recovery, and there's no fact, need to have this type of pessimism to begin with. There's, there's a certain freedom you can play with where there's not as clearly necessary a, a time you have to stop, you know? Mm -hmm. It's kind of... It's kind of neat like that. But there's also pressures. You got to make money and stuff. You're getting older. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard. It's yeah. harder to. It's be just a pro like how bad older. do you want it? Like, what? Where are your priorities? Now, in this. So game, we're almost maxed out. You want to talk about the game? Yeah. You know, let's let's talk about the game at least for a little bit before we go back on this. But like, oh, the <laughs> Reaper didn't kill anything. I bet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, at this point in time. Armani's got a really good amount of creep spread. It's, there's actually literally no easy area to push for Terran. Um, but we're still getting to the point in time, to be honest, where we need to see how does Bomber actually push. And I think that's going to be now with this next wave of brigands and a tank coming in here. There, it, now, two is pretty much lined up, by the way, which is a very important thing to look at here. Now, this is a jungle of creep he's going to have to push through. Uh, he's doing a pretty good job. He has his tanks yeah. on the high ground, so it's going to be hard to... Really lock down kills. You want to basically, this is so good by the way that he remade this over here because yeah. this does, does absolutely nothing. Now, 
Again, you want to have just enough Marines in the front that you can kill off Creek Tumors at a pretty fast pace, but enough that if you, you can pull away and you won't be losing too much if you get caught. Now, here comes the counterattack here. I'm sorry, I should say uh, surround, not oh counterattack. Oh my god, that is a lot of Banelings. Oh, the targeting, man. maybe not quite there. Uh, the Banelings well, well through a lot. You know, he gets all the tanks. Yeah. There's one more tank in this game. I don't see where it is right now. I'm sure it's inbound uh, to meet with this push, but with not enough tanks and already plenty of bailings to hold and 12 more on the way, I don't think that Bomber can just push through. But let's see how the bailings connect, because if they're all shot down and don't connect with their target, then uh, the, total, the whole game gets turned on its head. Here we go, another Ooh. attack comes through here. Yeah, maybe that tank going up a little bit too far for it. The Ling Bane just rolling through absolutely everything. So more Marines up on the high ground here, stimming and running away. Armani chooses to turn around. Well, he's going to go back and remake some more Banes, and but I think it's getting more and more desperate here on the Terran side of things. But this even is... though, well, look, there's a lot that Zerg, uh, Ter Terran has uh, to keep pushing with, but Zerg's getting five bases up, mm -hmm. and I don't see this creep being pushed away, and I see no opportunity for Terran to get a real foothold with the tank number being knocked down so low. Yeah, he doesn't have many tanks, that is for sure, but he's hitting this kind of parade push that he was really known for back in the day, right? So 13 Marines at a time walking down. He's microing his heart out right now. It's just, is his control going to be good enough? Can he whittle this down over time? Well, this tank is actually not covered whatsoever. It could still do a decent amount of tank shots over here, but yeah. you know, every time the tank's picked off, the Zerg is allowed to retreat, rinse and the, repeat with more Banelings. The one thing I'm Terran noticing is, from Bomber that uh, really is separating him from some of the top tier Terrans, his tanks are not targeting Banes that well. A lot of these things, I'm seeing the tank just target whatever it wants. So it's turrets swiveling around, it's hitting Zerglings and things. You really do need to target Banelings with it. It's very, very important to try to knock those numbers down. I want to see how well Bomber can keep control of this top base. Because one thing about Armani that's becoming more and more clear in this series is that he likes to pocket Banes on the edges of bases. Even if you know he's going to do it, he's still going to set up uh, for that. TVZ, more so than I think any of the other matchups. From the Zerg side, is you can abuse the fact that Terran might have their screen in the wrong spot at the wrong time. Bailings are the, the key unit for defeating infantry and killing workers. So if you just, while the push is happening, have them ready, yeah. you have your Banes ready to hit those SCVs, the odds of them being able to cover everything in a, a fraction of a few seconds. Okay, that is a lot of Link Bane. Uh, going right up underneath the Liberators, on top of the Siege Tanks as well. Bomber microing back, well, actually what. holds on for now. Yeah, the upgrades for Terran looking pretty good. A little link yeah. counterattack comes in here, though. Now, this might be the opportunity for Bomber to push in. Is there actually enough here? He's splitting really well. He got rid of all the Banes. No real connections made. Okay. Liberator Jones set up here. He now, uses a lot of SCVs at his fourth base, but it's his fourth. It doesn't matter as much if he can continue to push in here. But another reinforcement of Link Banes starting to roll through. Once again, that siege tank not sieged at all. Okay, the push comes through again here, and now it, it, this hatchery, he's trying to keep this alive. The game will still go on even if Zerg loses this, but I'm worried that Zerg is trying so hard to defend everything that there will not be anything left to prevent Terran from pushing. Well, right now he's really, he's getting in there deep, but let's not forget oh. he's on creep, so these flanks can come very, very quickly as well. Uh, Armani still technically alive, not mining from that base anymore. That though. hatchery has not been picked off. I'm worried that our uh, bomber is going to push in so deep here without actually taking anything with him. He's not killed the hatchery. Uh, he's getting further and further. He can kill these drones, but I mean, as you were saying, Artos, I mean, surrounds come very quickly here. But, yeah, I, you but know, maybe he just has enough. And kind of an insane push by bomber. Beautifully done. Beautifully yeah. done. That's that's the bomber we know and love. He's back. Very nicely played there. The parade push working out for him. Uh, I, I I do feel like I can see a difference as far as the actual battle micro compared to an innovation or a Maru. Oh, yeah. Especially. Uh, but yeah, it, I mean, that was that was good. I like it. Bomber's showing a lot of strength in that game. He looked very good, but I think if Armani had been a little bit more patient, maybe sacked the, the fourth. There was a period where he was actually just rallying everything in there, mm -hmm. and I think had he regrouped. Yeah, he did need a regroup. Bomber was pushing so hard, he never even killed the fourth. He actually pushed past it. 
He actually, it seemed, especially for the way that map set up, he wanted to be in the middle of all the rally points. Yeah, that's exactly what we saw. A, a player that's not good at, act, at completely resetting, and that could be hard in StarCraft too, to reset the, the rally point for everything in sure. a push like that. Yeah. Uh, suddenly everything is running through the Terran army, you're just gunning it down, and you snowball it. Uh, Eternal Empire here for game number three. Only one will move on. Armani vs. Bomber, the final game starts now. Turn to jump, why you? Africa Flex, Armani, Park Jin Hyo. Team GP, Bamo, Choi Ji Sung. And now what do you do? I love this. Drone scout again from Armani. He's yeah. not very interested in getting proxy. Well, I think he thinks that if he just sees a proxy, he automatically wins, but he knows, yeah. okay, if I just get surprised by this, I'm going to be robbed. Yeah, if you don't scout the proxy while it's still making, you're at a disadvantage. Like yeah. you're, you're very likely to lose the game. The problem is that it's uh, hard to find the proxy. Oh, with great, the on one side and the drone on the other, that's like it that's, really downs a percentage of places. That's what that I was going to say. Is it's, it's still easier for Zerk because you can comb one corner yeah. and, then, and then check around. I mean, they could always put it further back, but then it's you know doesn't have as much efficacy when the rush actually starts. But I mean, the idea is there, and I think Armani's already telling. Bobber and the rest of us where he sees himself as far as strengths and weaknesses and says, look, yeah. if I if I can just play the game I want to play, I will beat Bobber. Well. And by the way, this might allow Armani to warm up really well against the uh, against Deer, assuming Armani wins. Because I think part of it, um, even though Armani's been in a couple GSLs, compared to what Deer's done and a lot of these other guys, yeah. they're so comfortable, this is just another day in the office for them. Yeah, and so, Perhaps being more warmed up. I've heard this from some pros too that after a couple games, you know, it takes hours for us to get through a group. Yeah. yeah. After a while, you, your body can only stay anxious for so long. <laughs> you can only be extremely stressed out for so much time, you know? And I think part of this is just, you know, okay, you lose in the first round. Okay, fine. But that's why we give you the opportunity to redeem yourself. Here Armani is. He's playing very well. Uh, it seems to me like he might win this, but we'll see. But if he does, he'll be definitely warmed up and definitely he'll have his head in the right spot to maybe play a closer game against Deer. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a pretty good assessment, and I do feel like he has potential to upset Deer. Definitely favor Deer there, but... Yeah. You know, it could occur. It could occur. All right, pretty uh, standard-looking opening, but based on where the SCV is hidden up at 12 o'clock, I feel like he's going to proxy a starport. Seems like it. Oh, hold on. No, no. I guess he's just waiting for a... He's going to give him this mineral on the scout. He's taunting him. This is the third base. It's actually a little... It's a little pylon he has carrying around. The... the SCV with the mineral in his hand. It's oh, a yeah? pylon. Is yeah. it a pylon-shaped mineral? Look. Yeah, it is. It's for his Protoss action figures. <laughs> you please, I never got to play with my toys. It's pretty expensive. Yeah. Now, um, a scout in here. You know, this is definitely important that he saw that third CC. Now you just know what kind of game you're up for. Yes. And I think Armani's already shown he's pretty comfortable just reacting. I think, the, as an example, I think the most comfortable game a Zerg can play is one where they just scout what you're doing, they just see what you've got, and they go, okay. They see it early enough. I mean, that's really all yeah. that Zerk can ask for, right? True. Do I see what you're doing? All right. Do I know how to play against that? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that's a little wait. bit true for all races, but I think especially did, for Zerk. Did he saw the third command, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In okay. The main. yeah. Okay. He only started his carapace here. He got two Evos, though, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he has two Evos at his natural. There it is, the plus one melee. Okay. Because I was going to say, when I see only Carapace starting and two Queens, what that looks like to me is he's preparing for a 2-1-1, <laughs> you know? 
like that. But uh, instead, of course, you want those two, uh, two Evos against the three command center play. Uh, and it looks like on Bomber's side that he's setting up for a very similar type of game, like a parade push specifically. He's gotten three barracks relatively quickly here with his third command, slowing down on the medevacs. So less harassment base, more power based from him. So this map, uh, I would say even more so than our other maps, is one where uh, you can end up with a very long TVZ here. Oh, yeah. Uh, some of our longest games out of all the matchups are actually TVZs on this map, at least for the season thus this far. This map gives long games, I feel like, in most matchups. Yeah. We do get a lot out of long, epic ones here. Well, I think it allows for players to expand in a lot of different directions. Yeah. And you can also continue to expand away from each other. And then you do end up with these fun games where it's a fight over the top, uh, the top left and the bottom right. Hmm. Yeah, we've definitely seen, especially TVZs, like you said, of that. Well, Baneling Speed on the way immediately. I think this is exactly correct from Armani. And he's actually going into Aspire. Something... My gut tells me that, like, Hydra would be good against this because it's a parade push. You just kind of fight power with power. But uh, it looks like he's going to do kind of the other way around, like harass a little bit, then go back and kill reinforcements, that type of thing with the mutas. Which, yeah, I mean, it seems like a, a fine idea as well. As long as he keeps his creep spread out, I think that'll be uh, good against what Bomber's doing. Or what Bomber's very likely to do, I would say. I got to hand it to Bomber. I was, I was pretty impressed with that push in the last game. Yeah, he did it well. I actually... To be honest, I didn't think it was going to work when he when he pushed past yeah. the fourth. Because sometimes, and this has happened to anybody who's like gotten ahead of themselves on a push, where you're like, no, just go for the kill. Yeah. Go for, and it's like, dude, dude, take, take the win. Yeah. You know, take the win and go back. But he he did it, and I think Armani also is in disbelief that that push would continue as far as it did. So the drops come in here, bomber, with great reactions, does pick up and back off. Muta's on the way right now. So Armani going to be hoping to catch some of these medevacs. Oh, look at that turret in the mineral line. All right. Old turret in the mineral line. Yeah. I like it. Well, it's good against mutas, mm -hmm. isn't it? Look at this ugly wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lowering the property value of the Terran base. <laughs> Especially when Banelings roll in and kill four depots yeah. at once. <laughs> You're like, oh, but the feng shui of the base was good. It's got like a big purple X where the bailings should hit to kill maximum. <laughs> it's got a runway with lights going yeah. down for the bailings to come in there and it kill the workers. Basically does. Yeah. All right, here okay. come the mutas. Let's see. Yeah, now, again, it's a lot of this is going to come down to how much damage the mutas can do. But with no defense over here, I mean, this is at least a great start. Now, I imagine the mutas will then go just towards the main. Like, the map sort of lends it for the Mutas to then go to that location. There was a turret, which Artosis was pointing out at the third, but uh, this is a lot of damage. Now, I thought you'd have more than five kills by now, but... Well, still, so, you know, lost mining time mixed in here as well. Sure. The Marines are stimming around and chasing Mutas instead of doing anything Whoa. else. Looks like he killed a big group of units with his Ling Bane during all this. There's that ugly wall. Yeah, only to become uglier. Seven more mutas on the way. He is getting that plus one attack as well. Two two going to be finishing up. Both sides finishing that up. Let's see how this push goes. Terran lost a lot of SCVs, but this army was already made beforehand. Zerg's going to rely on counter attacking here on the Fugly Wall, and uh, he just gets in. Ooh, that's a lot of links. Oh no, Bomber turns around with everything. Oh my god! And this is a counter attack where he's going to be hitting so many locations. He can actually get these links all the way into the main, and it's like. Oh my god. Yeah, this is brutal. This is really unfortunate okay. for Bomber. Right? This this could be, I'm not saying the game's gonna end now, but this is if it doesn't, we can always go back to this moment. <laughs> yeah. And say that's yeah. where Armani won it. Well, especially when Bomber turns around his whole attack. If yeah. you are across the map and your opponent counters you and you turn around, that is never a good situation. Ever, 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 ever. It's like wrong. You know, like you made so many mistakes already and now you're making another one because all of his units are basically over at you. Yeah. And then you turn around and see these units, did those really help against that? Not as, like, uh, you know, you almost have to get counter damage done in my opinion. Push continues on. 
And, I mean, if this doesn't work for Bomber, I don't know if anything is. Well, all he has to do is make a million bane links because yeah. it's 80-plus drones to 20 <laughs> CPUs. Okay, the tank's getting completely oh, annihilated here. Yeah, there's so many bane links. There's so many mutas here. GG, Armani takes it, and Bomber is the first player eliminated in Group E. Showed some good games, though. Definitely like game two against Armani. Very strong. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I hope that Bomber continues to practice really hard. I really want some of these older guys to uh, come back to make it, you know? As an older guy, I want that too. Yeah, yeah. I'm rooting for the older guys. You know, Bomber didn't quite make it. Uh, Dream didn't quite make but it. I think this is just a start here for Bomber. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely still potential for him. It just, it's going to take a lot of hard work. And who knows how long? We have lots of time. Yeah. That's the nice thing about StarCraft. Yeah, yeah. We get to be an old eSport and stay an old eSport. We don't have, like, you know, the three months when our game is important before the next game comes out. So many more seasons to come. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, the final best of three in Group E of the GSL Code S.